is. Uh, hmm. That's interesting. So against against a better player at higher stakes, I'd probably bet here. But I think if even if he has an eight, he's not gonna fold. So I'm not gonna turn this hand into a bluff. And uh, he had threes this time, so let's go take down a small pot. Um, there's an interesting spot right there. I had queen 10 in the cutoff. Uh, if I were at less tables, I would be opening that. But don't really need to at this point. So we go ahead and just fold it. And we're not giving away much by folding it there. This was, And here's an example of a misclick. If I were in later position, I'd do this. It, and again, like this is not terrible. If I were playing at less tables, like I would mix in. You know, some six, seven suited in my UTG open range uh, to keep it balanced. But again, like I'm not playing for balance when I'm multi-tabling at low stakes. But we take down the pots. Not a big deal. So here I flop top pair and I got called. I think there's lots of hands that we have beat that can call us on the flop. But I think the hands that have us beat are gonna call the second barrel and like say a pair of jacks might fold to a second barrel so what I want to do is check back leave the hands that are bad in his range uh, still there on the river so that I can get paid by like one pair of queens for example and get value whereas if I bet the turn he might have folded it so he had a bigger nine in this case but I think the rationale is there Um, so this guy, he UTG raised, and then I 3-bet, and then he snap goes all in. I think ace-queen is crushed, so we'll just fold. No problem. Here we had ace-queen. We check back the flop just to, um, you know, like we could have c-bet. It's a good board to c-bet. Just king xx is always good for a c-bet, but it's also good for a check back. Because I can, I mean, you don't always have to c-bet the flop. You can do a delayed c-bet on the turn, and a lot of times uh, you'll be able to take it down. And a lot of what I find at the lower stakes is players just love to call one on the flop. They just want to see another card real bad. So even if they have like absolutely nothing, they may still just call one, and then you're left in a spot where you believe that he must have something to be able to call, and you're kind of playing a guessing game even from position. So. Sometimes if you just check back the turn uh, or the flop and then he checks again on the turn, you can fire off a C bet that will induce folds a lot more frequently than on the flop, I find. On really dry boards, that is. Um, so here's an example of a pretty dry board. I think it's pretty good for a check raise here with jack eight, so a little bit of air. Here he limp re-raised or not sure what's going on but I have ace king and I want to see five cards so let's just ship it in and uh, looks like we run good this time so we win the flip he was slightly ahead but you know pretty much 50 50 and um, I find a lot of times like I get guys to call with much worse here with eights it doesn't play so well for a set mine and when I'm being three bet like this I would assume that a lot of times he's gonna have a pocket pair that has eights crushed so I'll go ahead and just fold eights here on this middle table eights facing a three bet here I'm three bet 
Um, you pay my M3. I look at his name, and it doesn't mean he's good, but it means that he's, you know, probably thinking about poker or whatever. So I think he could be light here. So I'm going to call one in position with Ace Jack and um, take a flop with this guy. I expect him to C bet his full range on the A, so I'm definitely at least going to call one. And now we're just going to play for value. So he checks. He may think his, like, queens or kings are no good but again I want to get paid by those hands so I'm gonna check back and same rationale if he has a hand like kings or queens he might pay off this bet but he probably had nothing so here we three bet with our aces we got called and we hit a terrible flop for aces this is really bad there are so many two pairs and like straight draws and stuff like that that can just crack aces on that board. I definitely want to play it fast on the flop, hope to get a fold, and we're really happy that he folded there for sure. Here with threes, I mean this is a pretty pretty good board for threes. Um, so I'm going to call one, even though I have this player to act behind. I don't think there are many hands that, that have hit this board, so. And we just get counterfeit real bad. And if he has an ace, he'll probably call if we try to bluff, so. <sighs> he might just put the rationale that we have a flush draw. Although, would he stick all his chips in? Nah, it's not worth it. I'll just check, even though we got counterfeit. I expect him to have a hand like ace high here. King deuce. So he had a flush draw. Probably could have caught, got him to fold King Deuce. But um, I think we played that okay. It sucks that we got counterfeit. But had we not been counterfeit and the board didn't get so scary for King Deuce, I mean, maybe. Because he actually, I mean, he has showdown value with King Deuce there, right? So if, if it didn't run off that way, I think we could have induced bluffs. That uh, that threes could have picked off actually on a board like that. So this is a really dry board, and I think I should check raise it. I'm watching this player pretty carefully. He's c betting a lot, but uh, after he goes all in, I pretty much have to fool. I can't just call with ace high. So he did overbet the pot by like one big blind. So I should have maybe take a note of that. I've just I've been watching this player specifically. I'm I'm keeping tabs on most of the players that are giving a lot of action. And um he's one of those players. So I did have like a mini read to make that check raise. Plus it was a dry board, so it's okay. Doesn't work every time it's not supposed to. Here, Ace is going to do pretty well on this board. Definitely good enough to just peel one. He fires a second small barrel. I'm not going to expect him to have a queen too often. And he checks back the Ace. So I actually kind of believe he has an Ace here. And I don't think I'll get him to fold. So I don't mind just checking back. He has 10. Okay. So he played that pretty well, I think. I didn't want to represent the ace on the river because it's it's just a line that doesn't really make much sense. Like how why would I call two streets with just ace high on a board like that? Probably wouldn't. So tens is not gonna believe that I have an ace there. But I would definitely believe that he fired two barrels on a dry board with ace high and then hit it on the river to induce a, a river bluff from me so he could snap it off. I could definitely see something like that happening. Um, hence why we just checked. So I think there's a good chance our ace is no good here, but he's so short stacked he doesn't even have a pot size bet left. 
So we'll call, but I'm definitely going to just check back happily here. And he had King High. So we got one caller after we see bet. That's either a draw. Now I definitely believe it was a draw after he checks back again. So he probably had some kind of a hand with a 7, like a7. Or a hand like that. I don't think I'll get him to fold a pair. So I think I can actually... Hmm, let's see how much he bets if he does it all. Yeah, so I expect him to have a 7 there. And, and what I was thinking about is depending on his bet, I actually think we can snap off bluffs with ace-queen because all the busted draws will... Well, not all the time, but a lot of busted draws will bet there. And all the like one pair type hands would check back. So it would be actually kind of fishy if you bet. Yeah, it would just be really polarized with bluffs and some like flop straights. So I actually really want to see what he had there. Ace 10. So not 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so the gut shot. Um, here this guy's barreled twice. I'm gonna believe it this time. Sixes are not doing so well on this board, even though it was kind of drawn on the flop. I almost want to re-raise again. I'm not gonna get myself into trouble, but I think this is a spot where you could re-raise again here on this top right table. Um, just because this this is a really weak bet by this guy, so it's kind of a natural reflex to raise him and try to isolate him. So actually, I am going to do it. I don't think he has a jack here very often. I mean, he definitely could have a jack. I'm not saying he doesn't, but just the way that played out, small bet, ISO on dry board, um, I think it's easy for me to represent a jack when I raise out of position like that so I like to play but you know again you're not you're not giving up much value by folding in spots like that even when you recognize a good spot for you know a squeeze or a re-steal whatever you want to call it uh, you could definitely just fold and play it safe too there's nothing wrong with that but I thought it was a good spot So we're approaching the 30 minute mark. I'm going to I'm going to leave this video at a 30 minute video probably split into two parts on YouTube. So I'll start wrapping this up and uh taking off my auto post blinds. off on the other table. Oh, forward, forward. It's another thing for those who are beginners, um, there's probably not many beginners watching this video, but you definitely want to do the take off your post blinds and just play out your free hands. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've you know, I've done that, and then the next hand I had aces, and I was like, and I got a full stack. I was just like, thank God that, you know, I didn't just leave the table. I took my free cards. I already paid the big blinds to see, to, to pay for a full round. You might as well see the hands for free. Well, not for free. See the hands that you paid for by posting your blinds. And I really hope Lady Luck will bless us with one of those examples of giving me a really big hand. But it doesn't, doesn't look like that so far. 